So when God created man, the Bible says in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our own image and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every creeping thing, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. So the key word I'm highlighting is the word dominion, right? So the Bible says let him have dominion over First of all, the animals. So it divides them into birds of the air, beasts of the field, and creeping things. So the first thing Adam had dominion over was the animals. So Adam had dominion over the animals. Um, you can see this in the way he related with the animals in the garden, right? So for instance, um, Adam was in the garden with a lion, and the lion couldn't, the lion couldn't bite him. The lion couldn't kill him. He was in a garden with scorpions. The scorpions couldn't bite him. He was in a garden with cheetahs and wild animals. And those animals could not kill him, right? The animals could also not kill each other because Adam exerted a godly kind of dominion over the beasts of the field. So, the same way animals were acting in God's presence, is the same way animals acted in Adam's presence. So God is a God of love and there's no there's no violence, like violence for violence, random violence with God. So if you put a lion and a, a goat and two of them are in God's presence, right? Because God is a holy God and is a God of peace and love and joy, the lion is not going to kill the goat. There's no bloodshed like in God's presence. So Adam was in the garden and he had dominion. So he had both wild animals and animals we call domestic animals. And none of those animals killed each other. So the lion wasn't like killing the, the sheep and the tigers were not killing the goats. So the animals, first of all, could not hurt Adam, right? Because he had dominion. And they also could not hurt themselves, each other, because he exerted dominion over them. The Bible also says that he had dominion over all the earth. So, nowadays, when you, when, you, when you read that scripture, human beings think we have dominion <laughs> right now, but we really don't have dominion. People say that um, when we're in Christ, Christ has restored the dominion. So, in a sense, Christ has restored the dominion to us, right? We have, a, we have some level of dominion, but we don't have dominion over the earth the same way Adam had dominion over the earth. So I can't put you in a garden with a lion right now. The lion will kill you in two, in two minutes. In less than two minutes, you'll be dead. But Adam was in the garden with all the wild animals and they could not kill him. The Bible also says that he had dominion over the earth, right? So man now does not have dominion over the earth. So when the earth likes, the earth does what it wants and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> so there are some people who are they are in a place and it, it, a tornado just comes out of nowhere, right? A random tornado and pulls everybody's house down. <laughs> and the men are running, the women, women are running, the children are running, even the, the, the mighty men, the rich men, the muscular men. When a tornado rolls into town, you can't tell it that I have dominion, stop it. To pull your house down. There are places where there are droughts. So you plant a seed in the ground and the earth tells you, I'm not ready to bring out any food. And there's a drought and you plant it and nothing grows and there's nothing you can do. There are places where the sea overruns its boundary. So there's an ocean and all of a sudden the ocean just gets angry and just rolls into town and there's a flood and it just is... So the earth right now is not under the dominion of man. But when God created Adam, right, he had perfect dominion over all the earth. So Adam lost dominion over the earth, he lost dominion over the animals when he sinned. But that's not the most do important dominion he lost. That's not the most important dominion he lost. He also lost dominion over himself. He, he, he lost dominion over himself. So human beings now don't have the ability to control their actions. Without the Holy Spirit, a human being is not really in, without, not just without the Holy Spirit, without partnering with the Holy Spirit, 
A human being is not in control of his actions. That, that control of his actions has been surrendered to Sita. So, for instance, you have a young lady who, when she was in her mother's house, she made a vow, or in her father's house before she went to college or high school or whatever, university, she made a vow and she told herself that no man would touch me before I get married, right? That's what she told herself. But when she got to school, the urge to fornicate came. And she could not control herself. She couldn't say no. Even though in her father's house, she made a vow that nobody would touch me. And she meant it. She really wanted to get married. Like, nobody should see my nakedness. How can 10 men have slept with me and I'm not married? So that's what she meant. That's what was in her mind, right? But when she got to school and she had the opportunity, by the time the urge to fornicate came, she didn't have dominion anymore. She couldn't... That vow that she made to herself, right? She couldn't keep it. She couldn't say, no, I will not fornicate. She gave in and... So, so you can be driving on the street now, right? And let's say when you left your house, <laughs> you did your devotions, you were very happy. You told yourself that I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy the joy of the Lord today. Nothing will get me upset. <laughs> then you get to go to your office. And one of your co-workers just, you were just having a conversation. All of a sudden, the person just spoke rudely to you in a very rude manner to you. And while you were there, in your mind, inside yourself, you were telling yourself, don't get angry, don't, re don't get angry, don't react, don't, don't, don't shout, just come, keep calm, keep calm. And that's what you wanted to do, right? But because you don't have dominion, you lost your temper. So, men generally don't have the ability to do what they want, right? Someone tells himself, I will not get angry, but someone steps on your toes and all of a sudden you are shouting. Somebody offends you. You want to forgive, but you, the bitterness just refuses to go. You are telling yourself, I want to forgive, but the bitterness says it's a lie, you will stay there. So when man sinned, he handed control over him, of himself to Satan. Satan, through the sin nature, now exercises dominion over a man. So what Jesus came to do, right? When, you, when Jesus came and you received the Holy Ghost, what it does is he restores your ability to exercise dominion over yourself. But people don't exercise this dominion. They instead choose to remain slaves to Satan by living in their sin. So a man who is living in his sin does not see himself as a slave to the devil. He thinks he's enjoying himself. So, somebody who is fornicating, for instance, deliberately fornicating, does not see that he's actually, Satan is actually controlling him. The devil is actually controlling him. He doesn't know. He thinks that he's doing it of his own will. But the day to become clear to him is the day, let's say someone just comes and gives him a challenge and just be like, for the next one month, don't fornicate. Then he will now see that he can't stop. You know, now that he's doing it, he thinks that he's enjoying himself, that he's doing it of his own will. But just tell him, for the next one year, don't fornicate. Then you will see that he truly cannot control himself. So for instance, if somebody tells me, for the next one year, don't make a YouTube video. I, I can drop, my, drop the camera and I will not make a YouTube video for one year, and it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. But if you tell a fornicator, don't fornicate for one year, he can't. It's impossible. He can't stop. He can be deceiving himself now that, you know, um, I'm, just, I'm doing it out of my own will. But ask him to stop. He can't stop. If you ask that same person, for instance, and tell him, don't eat beans for a whole year, he can decide not to eat beans for a whole year. And it's not a big deal, because he has control over his ability to eat beans. He has his thing, he's in full control of his ability to eat beans. But if you now tell him don't fornicate, he can't. He really can't. So when you live in sin, you're actually enslaving yourself. You are a slave to Satan. You are enslaving yourself to the devil. Anytime you deliberately decide that, you know what? 
I'm just going to go and sin, then I will tell God that I'm sorry that you should forgive me. What you are doing is you are binding yourself to the devil. So, for instance, let's say someone comes to in his office, someone comes and asks him a question, did you do this? And at that moment, what he doesn't know is that Jesus stands by his right hand side and Jesus says, say the truth because I am the way, I am the truth. So Jesus is telling him, say the truth. Then Satan will stand by his left. <laughs> and Satan will say, the devil is a liar, so my son, lie. So Jesus says, say the truth. Satan says, you lie, because me too, I'm a liar. Then the guy now foolishly tells himself that I'm under grace, God will not punish me. So let me just lie and repent after. What he did is that he just handed himself over to Satan. So at first, he'll be doing it deliberately. Right? He will think that he'll be actually lying of his own will. But a day will come. He cannot stop. He literally cannot stop. So someone is in, his, is in her office. Someone now comes and offers them bribe. Then Jesus will stand by the right and say, I'm a righteous God. If you want to be like me, don't take the bribe. Then the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy will now stand by the left and say, I am a thief. This money doesn't belong to you, but take it. <laughs> then the person will now take the bribe and say, you know, we're under grace, God will forgive us. They are binding, they are becoming a slave of Satan. So it will always start with you voluntarily giving yourself over to the devil. Right? Doing it of your own will. But a day will come. You will not really be able to say no. Any sin that you start... You will start it with your will, but a day will come, you can't see him. Just like the one that is fornicating, you get to a point, you can't stop. And if he tries to stop, Satan will make him a masturbator, and he can't stop. But he started doing it by himself. The one that is a liar will get to a point where he can't lie. They can't stop lying. The one that, when they first started offending the person, the person had the choice to forgive, right? Forgive was with, was with to ability to forgive was within her control. But she chose, let me go and revenge. Let me go and make this person feel bad. How can you talk to me like this? How can you? So God says forgive. He says, no, I will be a wicked person. So they will first start that unforgiveness with their will. But a day will come that bitterness will become your default position. Where you can, it's, it's, it's almost like you cannot forgive. And the reason you've done this is you've handed yourself over to Satan. So he has taken control of your soul. So true dominion is the ability for a man to not live in sin. If you see any man who has overcome sin, that man is a warrior. He's strong. He's very strong. He's a warrior. Anybody who can resist sin, you should be admiring him. He's strong. So you see somebody who is a, who is a billionaire. He's very rich, but he can't control his loss. Today he's in the news. He has slept with this one. Tomorrow he has slept with this one. He has committed adultery with this one. He has committed adultery with this one. So, in his mind, he has exercised dominion over the years because he's rich. Satan doesn't care if you are rich. That's not, that's not the primary dominion he was looking for. So, in his mind, he has exercised dominion because he's rich. But he, he can't control his loss. He's sleeping this one, sleeping this one, sleeping this one. I have many wives everywhere. He's a slave. He can't. He can't stop. You see somebody just come, they just talk to you and you have you've lost your temper. You're also a slave. There is no dominion. You want to stay calm. You don't know how you raised your voice. When you raised your voice, you don't know. When you started shouting, you have no idea. <laughs> when you started, you just saw that you were shouting. You didn't even know why you started shouting. There is no dominion. So when you exercise dominion, right, the world will look at you like you are a fool. The world will look, it will look like foolishness, right? When you're truly walking, you will look weak. That's, that's even the word. You will look like you are weak. So let's say you just bought a brand new car. You've saved for this car for like five years. It's your dream car, right? You just got it. Truly speaking, it's your dream car. Then you drove out. You were just driving one day, enjoying yourself. <laughs> then one day, so, so someone just came from behind and rammed into you. From nowhere, someone just came and rammed into you. 
when you come down, right, automatically you are going to start shouting. Automatically. You don't even care who is looking, who is not looking, who is not, who is on the road. You just start screaming at the person. What's wrong with you? Didn't you see that story and story and story, story, story? But imagine somebody who that thing happened to. He just bought a brand new car. He has saved five years for this car. Someone came and ran into him. Then he got down, he looked at it. He just turned and went back and entered his car and drove up. Or let's say that someone is standing in public. Let's say you know when we're in school those days. Let's say you're in school. Somebody is just in class. Then somebody just come and slap you for nothing. Someone just comes and just slaps you. And people are watching you. They slap you for nothing. If you just say God bless you and you just walk away, people will call you a fool. They say, ah, are you are you all right? You took this insult. This person that you can even beat up, you can't beat this person. This person is your junior. He's not even your mate. You are ten years older than this person. They just came, just insulted you, even slapped you in public, and you just walked away, you will look like a fool. But what they didn't know is that you are strong, you've exercised dominion. That at that moment, they slapped you. Every fiber in your body was saying, slap him back, insult him, slap him, beat him up. Who is he? Does he know who I am? And you were burning, you were enraged. But as a warrior, as a strong man, you say, ah. God said, turn the other cheek. He says, forgive, pray for your enemies. And you controlled yourself. You say, no. No, I'm not slapping back. You say, God bless you. And you go. People will call you a fool. But the one who went, let's say you're in class now, right? Remember when you were in school? Then someone will come and slap somebody. Then the person got up and beat the person back. Beat him up and showed him that he's a strong man. People will be hailing him. They'll be clapping for him. They'll say, ah, this guy is a no-nonsense guy. They can't, but they, they can't, they can't do him anyhow. Nobody can take advantage of him. Uh, see, I just beat that guy up now. Nobody can treat him anyhow. He's a strong man. But he's a weak thing. Because as he slapped him, he didn't know when he got up and slapped the person. He was not even controlled. He was not in control of himself. Immediately they slapped him. He got up and slapped the person. Before he even knew what his hand has touched the person's face. And he has beaten him up thoroughly. The after he has beaten him up, that's when he now did. <sighs> it's at that moment that Satan left him, that he's now in control. So even if he told himself, I will not slap the person back, I will not shout, I will not insult him, he could not control his temper. He now started to fight. So to the world, to the world, he looks like he's strong, but he's weak. If you see, if you, if you, if you see a group of fornicators, huh? you see a group of ladies that are fornicators, most of the time they think they are the, they are the happening thing. That they've managed to, and you know, they are, they are experienced. When you see somebody who is a virgin, they will start insulting the person. That this one is a virgin. You've not tasted anything. You've not, you know, you are 30 years old and you've, you, you are, your eye never open. You've not experienced life. They'll be insulting the one that is a virgin. Not knowing that that one has strength and they, they are weak. Because when the urge to fornicate came, they could not close their legs. They opened it and slept with men. Saying, oh, it's my boyfriend, he loves me. Jokers, weaklings. They opened their legs and fornicated around. After the first boyfriend, they told themselves, nobody will sleep with me. The second one came, the leg open. They, they said, oh, nobody will touch me again. The third one came, the leg still open. Then the one that is a virgin, they have the gods to be insulting that one. They don't know that one is a, she's a warrior. That every time the urge came, she said, never, never. And she kept herself now, she's 30. She's 30 years old and nobody has, no man has seen her naked. She's a warrior. That's dominion. When you have control over yourself. You see men nowadays, a woman will pass. She will be dressed like a harlot. Scantily clad. With making sure her, her cleavage is showing. Some of them are even Christians in church. They will make sure they, they show their cleavage. They make sure, two Christians, they will make sure they wear tight tight or skirts that make that show that they have bumble. Then a woman will pass. Then all the men will not raise up their head. They will not look. They will say, Kai! See if I am babe. They will look at her bum bum, look at her breast. Then they will not give, deceive themselves and give themselves the excuse that, you know, men are visual. These are, this is just how God created us. You have lost, dog. Okay? You have lost. You can't control your eyes. Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. I will not look lustfully upon a maid. 
Job was in control of his eyes. Job 31.1. He says, I will not look lustfully. So a woman can pass him with tight shirt, tight blouse and tight skirts. His hair doesn't lift up. His eye will not follow her and be doing like this. The ones that are weak, they can't control their loss. So the woman will pass the room. Sit down and say, raise your head. They will raise their head. Sit down and say, look at her bum bum. They will look at the bum bum. Sit down and say, look at the breast. They will look at the breast. Sit down and say, as she's walking, just be following her with your eye. Then the guy will be lusting after her. Forgetting that Jesus said, if you look at the woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. The weakling will look at the woman like that. Then when he finishes, he deceives himself that you know this is how God made us. That you know that you know men are visual. You just have to shut up, shut up. You have a problem. You need deliverance. God didn't make us lustful. That you can't control yourself every time a woman passes, that you just have to raise your head and look. God didn't make us like that. The man God made Adam. God brought a woman stark naked. Eve was stark naked. He didn't say, ah, see bum bum, see breast. Is that what he said? Go and read your Bible. Do you think he was tied away with bum bum and breast? People that can't control lust. But the one who will not look is the one that is a warrior. Because he has exercised what? Dominion. Dominion! The devil can't tell him what to do. The devil can't make him lie. Can't make him collect bribe. Can't make him have unforgiveness. Can't make him lose his temper. Can't make him fornicate. He says, I'll marry a virgin and he will actually marry a virgin. And there's nothing Satan can do about it.